Some say that utilization monitoring takes too much time and is too complicated. Well, that's not necessarily true. In fact, it's not time-consuming and it's not complicated. It is simple, doesn't take much time, and is a critical element in proper management of your grazing land. That translates into healthier, more productive rangeland and livestock, and that is worth the effort. Utilization measurements and documentation should be a part of your monitoring program. It helps you to determine if the grazing system is working or uh, uh, and if, if you're meeting your goals, whether it be increasing diversity or uh, uh, decreasing the amount of bare ground. Um, economically, uh, in the long run, uh, a proper grazing system should uh, should increase your stocking rate and thus increase the amount of forage and come right down to your your pocket in terms of cash flow. Utilization or use is the proportion of current year's forage production that is consumed or destroyed by animals. Proper utilization or use is a degree of utilization of current year's growth that, if continued, will achieve management objectives and maintain or improve the long-term productivity of the site. An overall resource goal would be to improve soil health. Increasing soil organic carbon in the soil profile will have a positive effect on range health. Organic carbon in the soil helps develop a healthy population of soil microorganisms that will help you evaluate how well the ecological processes are functioning. Identifying specific goals and objectives is critical to maintaining or improving grazing land productivity on the ranch. Attainable objectives to meet soil health goals include less bare ground, increased litter cover, and plant species with enough diversity to improve the productivity of the site with taller, deep-rooted bunch grasses. Utilization monitoring is a tool to help reach the overall goal for grazing lands. How does utilization monitoring help you achieve these goals and objectives? By controlling the amount of defoliation of forage species in the plant community by livestock. This can be easily accomplished by simply managing the timing, intensity, and frequency of the defoliation. Research has shown that 50% or less defoliation by weight is necessary to promote and maintain healthy root systems or root mass. And this also provides thermal protection of plant crowns and the soil surface during periods of extreme temperatures throughout the year, and it maximizes moisture retention. Leaving adequate green leafy photosynthetic tissue enables proper root growth and provides energy for above-ground leaf production. Also, keeping adequate stubble height will improve drought reserves and may hasten spring green up the following growing season. This also provides herbaceous biomass, or litter, which is critical to the carbon cycle that is necessary for plant health and growth. In general, at the beginning of the growing season, grasses receive energy from the crown of the plant near the soil surface for leaf development up to the three-leaf stage. For further leaf and seed development uh, during that growing period, Grasses are very dependent on the photosynthetic activity of those existing leaves. So stubble height after grazing becomes very important for the ability of that plant to regrow and produce new leaves. What plant should be monitored? What is the species composition of the grazing land on your ranch? Learn to identify the plants in your pastures. Are they productive forage plants, or are they unpalatable, undesirable, and less productive species? Are they decreasers, increasers, or invaders? Managing your livestock to defoliate no more than 50% of the current year's growth of forage plants is one objective. Well, the utilization uh, helps you pinpoint more w exactly when, when you have that 50% utilization target hit. Proper utilization levels keep these plants vigorous and healthy and more competitive in the plant community. Monitoring helps you learn more about range plants and how those plants interact with one another and with grazing animals. 
With a planned change in grazing management, a good long-term monitoring program will track whether you are on the right track to accomplish your goals. Where do I monitor utilization in my pastures? Well, ranch goals and objectives will determine where utilization monitoring will occur on the ranch in a given pasture. Distance from water and topography are factors which will influence how livestock will utilize different areas within a pasture. Knowing the location of these areas will help you to locate the best monitoring sites for utilization, obtain the best information before making management decisions. Well, and see, you know, you can get a map of your whole ranch that looks like this. It is not practical or possible to monitor utilization on every acre. Select areas that are most representative of the pasture as a whole not too close to water or salting areas or gates, but not too far from water. Also, select areas for sampling that you could expect to see improvement occur in a relatively short period of time. You may also want to monitor utilization in more critical sections, such as riparian areas or critical wildlife habitat. When you start utilization monitoring on the ranch, some pastures may not be suited for utilization monitoring. If lower successional species dominate the site and higher successional species are absent, the pasture may not be suitable for monitoring. An example would be a plant community dominated with blue grama and club moss and no blue bunch wheatgrass or green needlegrass in the stand. A utilization cage is a common tool to use as an aid to determining utilization levels. The cage is an enclosure designed to keep a small sample of ungrazed representative grass species that can then be compared to grazed plants. Uh, setting a cage up in each pasture and usually it doesn't take much. You've got to go up and turn the water on and drag the mineral troughs up there so it doesn't take much to throw a cage in and steel post that down when you're scattering your mineral. And Cages come in a variety of sizes and types. Many materials that can be used for a cage are perhaps materials you may have on your shop and on your ranch. Woven wire, chain link, steel post, they can be used to make a cage. Cage locations within a pasture must be moved from one year to the next. There is no permanent transect needed to collect utilization data. Select one or two of the key forage species in the cage that will be sampled in the pasture. Clip the plant or plants at ground level, keeping the plant intact. Then tie a string or rubber band around the plant close to the base of the plant. Balance the entire plant on one finger. The point on the plant from the base where it is balanced represents 50% by weight. Measure this distance from the base. This is the stubble height that grazed plants will be compared to determine use levels. This can be easily measured using a yardstick, ruler, or multi-tool. I was surprised to really learn just how much of the actual plant is, weight of the plant is at the, at the bottom, so 50% um, utilization is actually a lot shorter than what you actually think in terms of overall plant height. Your, first, your early impressions is, well, if it's a foot tall, six inches is 50%, but it's a lot less than that. For the final determination of utilization levels in a pasture, after livestock had been moved when within three days, a minimum of 30 measurements should be taken for each key species. Try to cover the entire area of your representative site. This means taking a sample ever so many paces until you reach the desired number of samples. Pick a landmark in the distance, walk in a straight line and don't look at the ground until you have reached the predetermined number of paces for each sampling point and stop at the same number of paces for each measurement, for example. Our rancher decides that he can cover the entire representative area and collect 30 samples if he takes a measurement every five paces. The sampled point will be taken at the front of your boot or at the closest representative plant near the front of your boot. 
If 30 samples are taken, simply adding up the total subtle heights of all 30 plants and dividing by 30 will equal the average stubble height for that part of the pasture. This is one way. After grazing occurs, uh, uh, going out and evaluating the site, it might take 20 minutes or half an hour. After completing the utilization transect, take a general look at the pasture as a whole to get a good mental picture or take a photograph to help you remember later when planning for the next grazing season. Checking heights of a few grazed plants of the key species after animals have been in the pasture for a short time only takes a few minutes. It helps you evaluate how close you may be to your target stubble height for your key species. And this can be accomplished when doing normal herd checks. Tracking utilization levels throughout the grazing period in a pasture will help ensure your target utilization is not exceeded. Getting more involved monitoring utilization will help you get a better picture of the use levels throughout your pastures. The first few years it may pay dividends to take photos of grazed plants sampled and ungrazed plants from the cage for comparison purposes. This can aid in calibrating your eye over time and provide visual aids when you confer with your local range conservationist. Many grazing management plans initially use calendar dates to reflect numbers of animals that can graze a pasture for a certain amount of time. With a good utilization monitoring program, the rancher should be able to move animals based on remaining stubble height of key forage grasses to meet utilization monitoring objectives. This is especially critical during low precipitation or drought years when livestock may be left in pastures too long if calendar dates are strictly followed. Climatic shifts from dry to wet rainfall years will change production on rangeland. Let's talk about grazing records. The utilization records that have been completed should be incorporated into your yearly monitoring documentation. This will complement your grazing records. Turn in, turn out dates, precipitation information, weather events, insect problems, and other monitoring information such as photos and cover measurements on permanent transects on the ranch. Put a high priority on allowing yourself time to compile, organize, and interpret the monitoring information you gather. A good time to do this is during the winter when you have time to sit down at a table and take a good look. This video portrays a basic utilization monitoring method to assist ranchers with a monitoring program. As a rancher you always monitor, it just it isn't formal. And even as the years go by the poorer memories a person gets, I, th I just think it's important to get it on paper. It's, it's nice to go back and look at the pictures and see what your ranch is doing four or five years ago compared to what it's doing now. Um, some things might be improved, uh, some things maybe not, but it's a tool for us to go back and use. We all want to learn from this and improve our grasslands and improve our range, and that's kind of what the, the whole thing is to, to help us. It, it's helped us meet our goals. Technical assistance is available from the Natural Resources Conservation Service. For more information, go to www.mt.nrcs.usda.gov.